yo, yo. Time to up your gaming skills with some expert urban gameplay, gaming tips, tricks, and tutorials brought to you by Mad Pips. Yo, 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 what's good, peeps? This is a very quick tips and tricks video for Pokemon Go. So if you blink, you're definitely going to miss a lot. So make sure you keep it locked. Yo, obviously the main point of the Pokemon franchise has and always will be capturing each and every Pokemon ever. However, unlike the games on the handheld consoles, catching a myriad of the same Pokemon isn't a waste of resources, in fact it's the other way around. When you catch a new Pokemon, you're treated to some Stardust and Candy for that particular Pokemon, a couple of resources you can never have enough of. So in other words, just be sure to catch everything you see. Yo, I guess for some people, the novelty of seeing Pokemons in the real world is fun and all, but if you're out and about, the last thing you want to be doing is spinning in a circle trying to find a floating Zubat. By simply turning the AR off, it grounds Pokemons in the same position the entire time and makes your life a lot more easier when you're in a rush. This may just be a personal preference, but I personally do prefer playing Pokemon Go with the AR switched off because it does make life a lot more easier as I mentioned before, and it definitely is a better experience for me personally. One of the essential tips that I think you should consider is don't spread yourself too thin. It's all well and good leveling all the Pokemons evenly, but the problem in doing that is the fact that you won't have an all-round powerful Pokemon, greatly reducing your chances of conquering a new gym around you. I think one of the greatest tactics is to ensure that you pump your level ups into the highest couple of Pokemons that you've got at your disposal, just to make sure that your gym leader possibilities is more likely. Goes without saying that saving battery is essential for a number of reasons. There has been numerous amount of reports online stating just how much power that Pokemon Go has been consuming on devices, regardless of how up to date they are. Battery saving mode allows you to keep your phone on, giving you the chance to catch nearby Pokemon, but it helps save some of the power on your phone along the way. So obviously if you need to make a call or so, you're not draining your battery just playing Pokemon Go. Yo, Pokestops are clearly an integral part of the game as they give you the chance to get some of the new items that otherwise you might have had to pay for in the past. If you're out and about or on the way to somewhere and a Pokestop is just a few steps away and it's definitely worth going a little bit out of your way to go and get it. Not only is it good for your account and inventory, but at the same time a few extra steps is definitely a little bit more exercise that you can say you've done throughout the day. But in saying that, obviously don't overdo it by heading to random places just for the sake of a few Pokestops as there are a few crazy people out there lurking around. So obviously whilst play this game is best to be as safe as possible. Okay, this might contradict the last tip with the exercise element, but I would say playing Pokemon Go whilst a friend or family member is driving might help unlock a few things. At times you're bound to get a lift somewhere, either by bus or by car, with someone else driving. Be sure to keep Pokemon Go app open at all times when this is happening. You would be surprised at just how many Pokemons you can discover whilst you're in a car, and your eggs will definitely get closer and closer in order to hatch, and you might get obviously some rare Pokemons through hatching your eggs. Some have reported that not every time while you're in a moving vehicle your kilometers increase so i guess walking still is the preferred method for most One of the most overlooked tips that I find with Pokemon Go is people definitely need to be a little bit more patient when aiming to catch a Pokemon. Instead of simply throwing your Pokeball the second you can, it's better to wait until the circle around the Pokemon gets a lot more smaller because from there you increase the likelihood of catching it all the more. And definitely try and use some of the raspberries and some of the items that you might use to entice some of the Pokemons to allow the process to be a lot more easier and it's definitely something any trainer will appreciate. Yo, I know most people probably already know this, but I'm definitely still going to address it. After first discovering that you can throw a curveball by circling your finger on the screen until it starts to spin, it doesn't only feel incredibly satisfying when you pull it off, but at the same time it also gets extra bonus XP's for pulling it off at the same time. So when Drowsy pops up on your screen for the 14th time in a row, try giving a curveball a go because you definitely rack up more XP points as you do the process. Yeah. 
Yo, make sure you use the Poke Laws to your advantage. If you haven't noticed by now, there are a vast amount of Pokemon trainers out there, both during the day and at night. Some of these trainers might have come across a Poke Law and have put it down on the nearby Poke Stop. If you're near that stop, there's no reason you can't go over to it. Park your backside down for about 20 minutes and catch every Pokemon that comes your way. And even though I don't personally recommend it, you may find yourself having discussions with other players at the same time. Yo, the last tip that I'm going to mention when playing Pokemon Go is you don't necessarily have to move. Whilst the game may be designed to have players get up and go outside, it isn't a necessary requirement. You can keep the game open, turn on the battery saving mode and simply look at your device whenever it vibrates. Clearly you're not going to get as many Pokemons as you would if you're going out for a walk and definitely you're not going to get as fit as you could if you were trying to rack up some of the kilometers. But at the same time, it does mean that you can still make a little sliver of progress without doing anything at all. Yo, anyway peeps, I do hope you found these quick beginner Pokemon Go tips very useful. I know some of the experts out there know everything down to the T about the game, but it's always nice to have a simple overview of things you might miss. I'm definitely going to try and do more gaming tips each and every month on the channel. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and do subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. And until next Urban Gameplay video, we definitely say peace out peeps. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for more cool urban gameplay videos.